All right, here we are for round number two. I've told my opponent hello, good luck. And this hand does not seem like the best, but it does not seem like the worst. I think I'm willing to keep my opponent mulligan to six. Um, having the mnemonic all in the opener is kind of meh, but at the same time, not really, depending on, like, if I somehow get the five mana, naturally I get to bring back agent stirrings, which isn't terrible. I'm not looking at the strike because I don't care enough to bring the window back up. So, take that for what you will. So, we're going to start out by going Power Plant for uh, Chromax Star, and then next turn, of course, we'll try to gain stirrings. And are we up against Affinity? That is a good question. <coughs> well, if we are, oh, we drew a pretty good card, now that I look back. Uh, so, the Affinity matchup is kind of interesting. Uh, it can really go either way. It depends on... How fast can I get drawn? How fast is my opponent's draw? My opponent could be on the um, blue, red, white kind of like artifact. Oh, he is. Okay. The Or she is. You know, whichever one. The blue, red, white... Um, I don't know what the heck you call it. Uh, I usually just call it blue, red, white good stuff. It, it plays like Sanctum Gargoyles and Glint Hawks and Mole Drifters and things. Okay, so that's um that's a good draw. So what I can do is I can actually play Prophetic Prism, and that way if I draw a Tron P, if I draw the Tower next turn, if I get lucky, I can play the Finger and Marauder. On the other hand, what I can do is if I play, if I crack this now, go Ancient Stirrings, I cannot go Finger and Marauder next turn because I will be a few men off. But I think I'm willing to guarantee that I get Tron here, so... I think I'm better off trying to guarantee that I get Tron. I'm probably not going to get Tron here, am I? <laughs> Alright, so... Oh, nope, I did. Sweet. Uh, doesn't really matter. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. So, we'll play that, and we'll pass turn. And now... Uh, actually, since I drew Mole Drifter, that was kind of the perfect draw, because now I can go Prophetic Prism into Mole Drifter. Which should be rather good. I can't imagine that is bad. I'm just going to put Rolling Thunder and Mnemonic Wall over here, so that they don't click them by mistake. Uh, so my opponent has an Ancient Den in their hand. They could, they did not go Glenhawk on turn 1 or turn 2, so chances are they, they either don't have a glint hawk or they could have a glint hawk and didn't want to slow their slow themselves down um could also just be the straight up red white and i remember somebody naming the deck boros kitty and i i always never understood that name but uh to be fair i i don't understand most uh deck names in magic so take that for what you will i'm gonna pause and wait for my opponent to come back so my opponent did, in fact, have a Glint Hawk Idol. Uh, Glint Hawk. I keep thinking Glint Hawk Idol. But uh, my opponent did, in fact, have a Glint Hawk. So we're going to go Tron. And we're going to go Prophetic Prism. Put that over there. I wish I could be going faster, but my computer will not permit it. So we're going to have to discard here, I believe. But I'm fine with that. We're going to have to discard something. Um, probably going to discard... Okay, well, we can discard a, a expedition map now. I, I don't think I'll... Well, actually, no. That just seems really dumb. I'm going to discard a Shimmering Grotto. I don't think we're going to need too many of them. And uh, Haunted Fengraph should be actually be useful here. I could easily be wrong, but we'll, we'll see. I should not be on shortage of colors. If my opponent does not journey to nowhere or Lightning Bolt, I will block... Um, I just want to save myself some li uh, life points at this point, I think. On the other hand, I could also try to race, which is probably the better play. Okay, now I'm going to block. <laughs> yeah, now I'll block. Um, my opponent, uh, of course, probably plays Journey to Nowhere main deck, so... It's not, like, guaranteed I'm going to be able to keep this around, either. Next turn I can go... Unfortunately, I cannot go Fangren Marauder and crack this in the same turn, which is a bust, but uh, that only depends on what I draw, of course. On the other hand, I could also Rolling Thunder away these two creatures and start attacking, which is 
probably a not a bad play. Uh, the reason for that is one, it, it makes my opponent uh, slower, and the fact that my mole drifter is getting in now is a good draw. Is getting in for damage is going to be really good. So now we can. Uh, let's see, I'd have to do for four. So. Question is, can I play prismatic lens as well? So I tap to do that. Uh, red, red, one, two, three, four. I should be able to, right? Yeah, pretty sure I should be able to. Let's hope I did not miscalculate this, or else I would look like a dum dum. But then again, I don't really care if I look like a dum dum. I'm already a dum dum. <laughs> so we'll get red and red. Okay. See, this is the pain of Magic Online. It just it just floats colored mana for no reason. I don't know why. Two, two, K, four. Okay, that better have worked. Okay, it did. I've definitely misclicked on plenty of Rolling Thunders. Not happy about it. Does my opponent play Apostle's Blessing? Uh, what other protection spells are there? Stave off. That's a one, isn't it? Uh, there's the one that scries, the really good one from Theros block. I don't remember what set it's from exactly. And gonna F6 using F6 strats. Right, and I'm gonna be right back. Okay, and I'm back. Uh, it looks like my opponent is still. All three lands and do nothing. That was a good draw. Okay, so we'll go ahead and play that. Go ahead and attack for two. Uh, there was something I was going to point out. I forgot what it was. Must not have been very important. Oh, yeah. So this looks like it's going to be three rounds with top eight. I think there's 24 players or 25, some crazy number like that. So I did win one of these already. I was pretty happy with that, with uh, goblins. I did win one of these with uh, goblins. <laughs> I was just testing out a bunch of decks, deciding which one I was going to bring first, and uh, I decided I was going to play goblins one week, and then I did kind of poor, and I wanted my run back, and I went undefeated. It was pretty good. I was pretty happy. So the reason I'm playing Expedition Maps first is so that if my opponent does anything to my Finger Marauder, he can't do it in response to me playing one of these. So I can crack it and gain uh, 5 life automatically. Okay, and we'll just say go. Fortunately, I cannot have 6 anymore because I do have Expedition Maps. So now I can get another Haunted Fengraph and I can get a another Urza's Tower. And I believe I win next turn. If I hit my opponent for 7 down to 9, uh, let's see, 3, 4, 5 for Mnemonic Wall, and then 3, 4, 5. Oh, no, I, I don't win, but uh, I get close. I do not win, but I get close. So we'll see what my opponent does here. Is my opponent going to play Journey to Nowhere? I assume they play it main deck. I could be wrong. We'll be right back. I was trying to figure out how to do hotkeys, but apparently you cannot do it while you are recording. So, yeah, I'm kind of screwed on that one. So there's Journey to Nowhere. We're just going to quickly gain some some life. We're going to, you know, gain a quick 10. And then we're going to, uh... Oh, I'm lagging a little bit here. Going to, uh, search for a... There's tower, and then we're going to get a Haunted Fengraph. Now, the problem, of course, with Haunted Fengraph is... That it doesn't get back um, my Finger Marauder, but it's still probably the correct play, I, I would hopefully assume. On the other hand, I could also get Urza's Tower, but I don't think I need the extra Matic. I, well, actually, maybe now I do. Yes. Maybe I should get another Urza's Tower. Yeah, I get another Urza's Tower. Since uh, my plan now is to Rolling Thunder my opponent out of the game. Yeah, so as far as cyborg goes, <clears throat> I'm assuming that my opponent has, uh, I wouldn't say raise, but probably has like maybe earth rift, stone rain, things of that nature, so might be a little difficult. Stone rain, uh, like earth, well not stone rain, but earth rift for me might look good against my opponent's deck if they're just on a bunch of carous. 
Okay, I guess I could draw that too. So we're just going to do this to do f6. Really? <laughs> I got to do that too? Forgot about that. Uh, yeah. So then we're going to get back uh, Rolling Thunder with my mnemonic wall. As soon as my opponent lets me do that. Blue. Stupid old drowsy update. Now, I know what most of you are thinking is, uh, is a Cronarch attacks for two, but most of the time, um, I find myself not doing that with is a Cronarch. And I actually find myself a lot of the time being happy I can block with an 04. So take that for what you will. Yes. Attack for two. My opponent could also have Prismatic Strands in their deck, but, uh,. Obviously, Prismatic Strands doesn't do anything against my Ulamox Crusher. And if they're doing that, I can probably play around it a little bit, I would hope. One uh, one card I do want to try to put in this deck is Ghostly Flicker. I do think Ghostly Flicker would be pretty good with uh, Mnemonic Wall and Mole Drifter. You know, you just draw a ton of cards. Uh, Mnemonic Wall and, and Mole Splicer with Ghostly Flicker would obviously be insane. And I'd probably replace Mole Splicer for this, if that was the case. I might actually... Uh, Try that after this uh, tournament. Switch up the deck a little bit. We'll see what happens. Oh, am I getting double flame slashed on my Ulmox Crusher? That's impressive. Well, better than getting journeyed. At least my opponent has two for one themselves. Yep, that's exactly what happened. Looks like they were just sitting on a bunch of removal. My opponent could just be straight up red light. I'm not really sure. But um, now I'm just going to go rolling thunder. Ooh. Now I'm just going to go Rolling Thunder, and hopefully that's for the win. Uh, one, two... Let's see. Uh, 11, 12? Oh, this gets in for two. Oh, no, wait. What am I talking about? I get in for 15? All oh, right. I'm pretty sure that's me lagging. So I'm just going to uh, set this up now. And save myself the agony of having to do this. Hit you for 15. Okay. I know one of the ways to tap your mana faster is to uh, get a better computer. So before any of you think of that as a joke, ha 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 ha. <laughs> I beat you to it. Sorry. But, um, alright, so Rolling Thunder, and we got there. Alright, so on to the side boards. I don't think that bringing in Cop Red is going to do much here. I do, however, think bringing in Journeys might. I think that bringing in Earth Rift is going to be a little too cute. I also think that Ulamog's Crusher is slow, and Seagate Oracles are slow. I don't think bringing in two of these is really going to do much. I think I just want a little bit extra removal. Mole Drifter in this, uh, in this one seems perfectly fine, because... I don't think my opponent's going to win very quickly, and at the same time, uh, the fact that they fly and block is a really, really good thing. So I'm going to pause and wait for Sidemore to be over. We are back. All right, and we are back. And normally, I hate, hate keeping hands like this, but we do have two Expedition maps. We have Chromatic Star, we, and we do have an Ancient Stirring. So assuming that all things are right with the world, in, uh, in magic regard, uh, I should, you know... Hit a land <laughs> with Ancient Stirrings. Or at least hit a land with Chromatic Star. If my opponent has Raze... Okay, well, now I'm just going to go uh, Expedition Map and see what happens. I suppose my opponent could have also brought in something like Gorilla Shaman. It's incredibly possible. But uh, I don't usually like... I don't think Gorilla Shaman is very good against this deck. I've seen people bring it in against me, probably because they just have nothing else. But... Um, I'm personally not a very big fan. Uh, I guess in this uh, case, I could have brought in something like Ancient Grudge. But, you know. So, I'm just going to spend my time getting a land. I'm not going to Prismatic Lens. Uh, I think I actually... I ac Well, not think. I actually lose mana on doing that. As where next turn, I can, I can go Prismatic Lens into uh, Mole Drifter and still be on the up and up. My opponent looks like they are on a... Uh, slightly slowish draw. What the heck is that doing in there? Can they return? Oh, yeah. Carouse. Me being dumb. Alright, well, they didn't have Stone Rain, which is good. So now we're just going to go get the Power Plant. 
and have Tron. And uh, one thing that um, you'll learn quickly when playing this deck is that when Tron does exactly what it's supposed to do, like it is right now, <laughs> you, you really start to learn how powerful it really can be. Now, Tron is, is really a, a glass cannon, in my opinion, because if, if they don't get Tron, it's really hard for them to... It's really hard for the Tron to essentially go off or even work. And if you start destroying the Tron pieces, it can become quite hairy, because they're going to start spending their time... Oh, you might Pyroblast here, too. They're going to start spending their time trying to... Uh, uh, trying to reassemble their lands, and if they're under pressure, it's not going to be too good. So my opponent's thinking I have to assume that they have Pyroblast, but they did not, which is good for me. And I don't even have to discard. Man, I'm so lucky. Must be nice. So this is what it's like to have it all. <laughs> and another Urza's Tower. Okay, so that's good. So if my opponent is going to Stone Rain, they will probably go after the Urza's Tower. And luckily enough, I drew another one. So, <laughs> I, I will not lie, I'm getting pretty lucky right now. I, <laughs> I <laughs> I'm not going to really, uh, you know, beat around that bush. I am getting quite lucky. So, uh, it also helps that my opponent probably kept a very slow draw, or a, a draw with a lot of removal. And um, that helps me in the long run, because I have Rolling Thunders. Virtually three of them with the Monoglo, but I have two at least. Uh... Next turn, I'm probably going to, if I don't draw anything else, Ancient Stirrings. See what I can hit. Maybe another Chromatic Star, another Expedition Map just to thin my deck, something like that. Alright, I'm going to pause and wait for my opponent to come back. I apologize, I keep having to do this. I'm going to work on the hotkeys, I promise, so don't worry about that. Okay, my opponent came back. Uh, okay, that's not bad. As far as uh, bringing in Earth Rift against my opponent... I figured they were only playing red-white, and since they're only playing a few Karoos, I didn't really think that it'd be very fruitful for me to do that. Alright. So here I'm going to... Ancient Stirrings. Why did I... I meant to tick this off, actually. I don't know why I had that on. That was an accident. Uh... T -t 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 -t. I'm just going to take hers as mine here. The reason for that is I have enough chromatic effects. I get to shuffle anyway. Unfortunately, I lost a rolling thunder. But now, if my my opponent is, tries to destroy a power plant, I have expedition map anyway. So we're just going to go ahead and play a bunch of artifacts here. Just play all of them, because I can. Come on, man. Like, What else am I using here? <laughs> I, I really have to select like what... Waste man, I want to use. <sighs> Listen, uh, not to complain, but like th that, that's ri a little ridiculous, don't you think? I'm I'm not a programmer. I don't really know if that's hard or easy to to program, but I w I would think you know it's not incredibly difficult to uh, program that you wouldn't have to do that for playing colorless cards. I mean. I don't know, this doesn't even say waste. You know, but... Whatever. <laughs> I'm over it. Done. Alright, so my opponent is at 22. That is annoying. But, eh, what are you going to do? See, this is where Ghostly Flicker would be really, really good. Because then I could just play this and just start drawing thousands of cards. I guess I was just kind of afraid to put it in because I figured the Prismatic Lens was more helpful. Obviously, here it was. So, maybe the Prismatic Lens is not what goes, but I'm sure there could be a card slot that I could put in uh, Ghostly Flicker. Alright. So now what I'm going to do is at the end of turn, I'm going to crack my Expedition Map to get Haunted Fengraph. And uh, get back uh, Mole Drifter. And then I'm going to play and draw some more cards. Ooh, that's not terrible. Do that. Let's hope my opponent does not have something that removes it at the end instant speed. See that too, like, why do I have to click on the... Um... On the waste mana? Like, why, why is that a thing? Again, it's not the end of the world, it's just really frustratingly inconvenient. 
draw Secret Oracle. Well, we can't cast Secret Oracle yet. And uh, I don't really... I feel like playing this out uh, is better than just holding it. I don't feel like um, Agent Stirrings here is going to get me anywhere. I don't particularly need anything at the moment. And I'm really trying to just draw into you know, uh, action. That's where Agent Stirrings does not get me action. It just gets me lands. So, we will see. Is this another Flame Slash? Nope, it's called Dotha Rebirth. Oh, okay. Why do you have to do that? Great Furnace, alright. Well, Call of the Rebirth, meet Blocker. Secret Oracle, too strong! Oh, that's a good draw. Alright, do this, see if I hit a Urza's Tower first, because I'd rather play that if that's the case. I did not, I hit that, which is funny. Um, Alright, so let's get in for two, get the business over with and done. My opponent can't be on this much air. I guess they're just on enough removal in their hand that they can't really play it. Which, uh, by all means, I'm not complaining about it, so. <laughs> Sorry for the hiccup, if you could hear that. Alright, take two. Play Seagate Oracle. Not cracking these, just in case I get Fringer and Marauder that I want to play next turn. Alright. Flame Slash or Urza's Tower? Well, I think I'll just take the Flame Slash here. And I'll play this. And now I'd have the chance if I want to Firebolt. And I think I do. No, uh, maybe not. No, I don't think I do yet. I don't think I have a reason to. Just pass the turn. See, the unfortunate thing now is any uh, uh, Haunted Fengrafts that I get, unfortunately, if this goes to the graveyard, I have a chance of getting this back, which is not the worst target, of course. I mean, you do get to look at two cards and, p and pick one. It's just um, not as good as a 2-2 flyer that draws you two cards, or it's not as good as Mnemonic Wall, say, later in the game, but, you know, we'll see. It also... Uh, Pays to mention that my opponent does not have much time left on the clock. They only have a little over 10 minutes. I did not notice that until now. I'm going to block the crap out of one of these goblins, I'll tell you that. My opponent also could have Firebolt, which they can flash back as well. So if my opponent is doing that, it will be fairly annoying. But... Happens. Alright. I'm not upset with that. Okay, uh, I really don't want to crack any of these chromatic effects, so I think I'll just play this, get in for three, and pass. I guess my opponent's just on lands. Some air? Seems very interesting. There isn't a point in just wasting these removal spells on these 1-1s, one and I'm racing three for two. And again, if I go Ancient Starrings, I'm not getting any of my win conditions. I'm not getting my Finger Marauder, I'm not getting my Mole Drifter, I'm not getting my uh, Rolling Thunder. And I don't see the the reason to crack these yet. I think next turn, if I don't draw something, I'll probably clack, clack, <laughs> crack one or two of them. But uh, we'll see. I also kind of don't want to crack the expedition map just yet. Because one, I kind of want my opponent to forget that I could get... Uh, that maybe I don't have another Hunt the Fengraph, even though my opponent sh uh, should, th should remember that I do. And I did put an Urza's Tower to the bottom, which I don't want to shuffle back into the deck. So... There is a good reason to not crack the uh, expedition map. And what is this? What the heck is that? Cook creature gets plus X plus X, where X is the number of charge counters on. All right. Forgot that card existed. Fair enough. So get the plus two plus two. All right. Well, flame slash will take care of that. And then I, I guess I'll firebolt this guy at the end, just in case. Yep, take four. I'm not... My opponent must be screwed on blue. Must be. Like, 
or or hasn't drawn any or they I guess they play prophetic prisms or even chromatic stars because uh this is just a worse bone splinter, isn't it? Okay, this is getting really annoying. By annoying I mean I can't <laughs> I can't draw wind condition. Granted, it's not like I'm in bad shape. I really have no right to complain. I'm mostly afraid of the longer the re this recording goes, the more taxing it will be on my crappy computer. And a lightning bolt to my face. Okay. It's not good for me. I guess my opponent could just be sitting on a fistful of burn as well, which would be quite, quite annoying. Alright. So, let's crack this for a red. And, okay. So, we'll go ahead and firebolt. Not the 3-3. Three, three. <laughs> if I had firebolt the 3-3, three, three, I would have been really angry at myself. <laughs> I mean, uh, from my opponent's point of view, it could be that I'm flashing it back on the 3-3. Three, three, I don't have another removal spell, but for me and all of you watching at home, obviously, that would be quite silly. Mole Drifter. Okay, there is Fangor Marauder. So now we pretty much win the game. So we'll go ahead and play Fangor Marauder. Green. And we even drew a Chromatic Star to go with it. I mean, I'm, I'm just assuming I win the game. So now we'll crack this for a red. Not a green just yet. So yes, auto yield. Did you record already? Oh, I drew another Chromatic Star. All right. Yeah, and my phone skips. At that point, my opponent is so far behind, and I'm going to gain so much life, I don't think my opponent has a chance to come back. So, uh, You know, like I said, when Tron does exactly what it's supposed to do, it's pretty powerful. So, uh, all right, if it's three rounds, I hopefully am a lock for top eight, even if I lose next round. But let's hope that doesn't happen. And let's try to go for the 3-0. So uh, I'll see you for round number three. Stay tuned.